friends welcome back today i'm sitting here in our small little entryway getting ready to decorate it for fall i'll also be sharing a couple weekend projects that i did to spruce up our entryway as well now if you are new my name is amy and welcome to simply our home currently i'm in my fall decorating series so if you happen to miss any of those videos as well as any of my shop with me's i'll have them linked down below in a fall 2023 decorating playlist now for my returning friends if you've enjoyed the series so far i'd appreciate a big thumbs up and if you could do me another favor and share this playlist over on your socials that would really help me out well without further ado let's go ahead and jump straight into today's video i hope that you enjoy here is our small entryway, and as you can see, it's pretty much a hallway that connects three of the main rooms in our home. Right at our front door, you're greeted immediately with our staircase. To the left is our dining room, while straight ahead is our kitchen, and then as you turn to the right is our living room. So our entryway, although small, is an important space to unite all three rooms so that they look cohesive and flow nicely together. A couple years ago, my hubby Scott installed this beautiful board and batten, which instantly gave this area tons of character. But with every good thing, there always comes a bit of a hiccup. As you see, we have a little overhang on the molding that sits on top of the board and batten, which creates just a little bit of a problem. If I try to center a piece of artwork, I either have to go above or below because it kind of wobbles or sits backwards. So our solution was to create a block that's the same depth as that molding, place it in the center, and then be able to attach the artwork and it hang plumb or level. So to attach it, I do not want to just nail it directly to the wall to create more holes. So instead, I'm gonna add these Velcro command strips to the back of the block attach it to the wall to secure it, and then I'll add a nail to the front of this block so that I can hang artwork or anything that I would like to change out seasonally. As far as today goes, I'm not going to be painting the wood block, but I think I will go back in and paint it the same color as our wall, which is the shiitake by Sherwood Williams. I think that'll make it look really nice and clean, especially if you catch an image of it when you're looking directly at the side. So for fall, I'm going in with a large tobacco basket and then in the center of it hanging a beautiful wreath that I think I got from at home a couple years ago. Now that this has all been taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my battery powered sconces. I love that I can take the remote and tuck that right behind the artwork. And when I wanna turn on the lights, I can easily do that. To the top of the console, I'm bringing in a crochet table runner that was from Hobby Lobby to bring in a cottage feel. Now I'm adding a group of amber colored vessels to one end to add a little bit of height as well as color contrast. Now that all the greenery and dried florals have been placed, I can now come in with some coffee table books. I love this down to earth and this made for living. I'm gonna place those down and then on top of that, I'm coming in with a more sculptural type element, which is this beautiful leaf dish with a bird perched on the edge to bring in lots of that autumn color. A typical arrangement on a console table is florals on one side and a lamp on the other. Well, that doesn't work in my case because we have no outlet and we have those sconces. So instead I'm bringing in this unique shaped candle holder with some tapered candles to add a little bit of height to balance the other side. Thank you. 
Moving down to the bottom shelf, I love to place the baskets that I got from Walmart. They were a great deal, under $20 for each one, and I love the shape and the little handle. So I'm just gonna place those back on the bottom shelf, and then inside I'll be adding a beautiful fall colored pillow to one side, and then to the other, I'm just draping a really cozy plaid blanket. Next is time to swing over to the opposite wall that is right next to our coat closet. We have some wall hooks that I love to style each season, and I'm also going to be changing out the scripture wall decor for a landscape fall scene that reminds me so much of my hometown in West Virginia. And don't worry, the Bible verse will most likely make its way back up here because it's one of my favorites, but just for a change, I'm bringing in this canvas print that I found from Amazon. I'm also super blessed and lucky to have have such a handy hubby, Scott whipped up this perfect wood frame for under $15 to display this beautiful print. To style the hooks, I'm bringing in this colorful lightweight throw, a garden hat, a wall basket filled with these gorgeous trailing leaves, and a cute little acorn that I found from Michael's. Oh yes, and speaking of acorns, that reminds me, I was in our backyard and I collected a few little acorns that have fallen off the trees, and so I thought they would look adorable placed in the dish on our console table. Before we finish up decorating the cabinet beside our front door, I wanted to share a couple projects that I accomplished over the weekend to refresh and make over our entryway. One area that needed attention was to sand the area around our new front door locks and handle. The next was to give the whites around a fresh coat of paint. After I had removed our storm door a while ago, I had patched the holes, but that was the farthest I had gotten. So all the trim needs sanded and refreshed with a nice new coat of white paint. So let's get this project underway. I hate to admit, but these are some long overdue projects that only took me a couple of hours to finish and made a huge impact. If you're like me and have a nagging project lurking over you that you've just been putting off, I encourage you to just get started. These projects only took me a couple hours to complete and they really made an improvement. Another tip that helps to get these projects completed is having your supplies on hand. Make sure to stock up on extra paint for house repairs and have them labeled and ready to go. Have extra rollers, paint brushes, paint trays, and that way, when you're ready, you're not wasting time having to go out, gather supplies, and you can quickly knock these, I'll do that another day project, off your list. Now that the trim is all finished, it's time to tackle the grooved area from old paint that was around our old lock. Without first taking off the lock or the handle, I started by sanding with a 50 grit sandpaper that took down the groove really quick. Then I followed up with a fine grit sanding block to finish it off. But then I realized it would be much quicker and more thorough to just remove the locks and get the whole area a good, nice sanding so that when I do paint, the door it would look really nice and smooth and uniform. Mm -hmm. 
After wiping down the door with some all-purpose cleaner, it's time to paint. I'm using the same color as before, which is the Sherwood-Williams Emerald Exterior Latex Paint in the Urban Bronze color. I like to first cut in along the window and all the paneled raised areas with a brush. Then I'll come in with a small roller to get a very smooth finish. One last project. Now while the front door stays open and the paint is drying, I'm going to go ahead and tackle this area as well. The spindles on our staircase need just a little bit of attention. Now our fur baby Nyla likes to stick her head through the rails to peek outside and while doing this her color scrapes against the wood rubbing off the paint. So what I'm going to do is just quickly clean this off with some all-purpose cleaner and then I'm going to kind of prime the wood in those areas with some chalk paint. This is the chiffon cream and then after that drops for about 30 minutes I'm going to go back in with some Navajo white which is the trim color throughout our home and then this will make our spindles look less tattered and torn and so much better. While this is drying to protect the area and maybe stay here for a while, I'm going to place one of those container lids propped up against the spindles and maybe this will teach Nyla to not stick her head through those spindles. All right, so now let's get back to the decorating. We have this mirror that is right next to the front door and to dress it up just a bit for fall, I'm adding some of those faux branches that for, from Hobby Lobby. I'm just taking two of those and placing the stems crisscross and behind the mirror itself. Then I actually have a couple pieces that came off of another stem to put in the middle so that you don't have that bare spot. And I think this just makes the mirror just come alive and just look so fallish. Next, I'm going to move out the cabinet with these awesome furniture movers from Amazon so that I can remove the runner that's there and replace it with another rug that I got last year from Kirkland's. To this corner I love adding back this antique basket. Then to it I'm adding a bundle of rusty brown grass and three picks of acorn branches that are perfect for fall. To style the top of the entryway cabinet, I'm coming in with a copper vase that was from Southern Living at Home. And as you all know, copper is my favorite, especially for fall. Next to it, I'll add this piece that is from Hobby Lobby. To the copper vase, I'm adding a couple of varieties of florals. The first ones are more of a bush-like floral with leaves in a soft linen color. Now I place the first one down and then for the second one, I'll place that right in the center of the first one so that it is up a little bit more in height. Then for a pop of color, I'll add in these really fun organic stems that are the same rust color like the row that are on the hooks on the adjacent wall and then 
a beautiful cognac color like the leaves above on the mirror. Now I could definitely leave the Hobby Lobby item just as it is as a catch-all for keys or anything like that, but I'm going to have some fun and I'm adding a wreath that I'll place directly on top and then I'm going to add a cute little white pumpkin that is nestled down in the leaves. To finish off the whole look, I'll bring in a, another white pumpkin. It's a little smaller in size. And I'll set that in between the two items and this will just complete the whole vignette. Okay friends, here's a look at the completed projects and a few final clips on how our small entryway turned out now that it's all decorated for fall. If you're still looking for even more fall decorating ideas for your entryway, I can go ahead and leave last year's fall entryway decorate with me so you can take a look. All right, sweet friends. Well, that wraps up today's decorating and makeover here in our entryway. I hope that I gave you some new ideas for decorating your homes and maybe some motivation to get a project done that you've been putting off. Well, before we go, let's go ahead and go straight to God's word and end our time together there. So today I'll be sharing with you Colossians chapter three, verses 13 and 14. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all of these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Well, I thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you did enjoy it. If you did, go ahead, give me a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Well, I will see you real soon in my next one. Take care and God bless friends. Bye.